Hey there. Uh, so in this recording, I'm going to uh, show you how to deploy a Streamlit app to uh, the cloud in a production environment. Um, and the reason you may want to do this is because you may be, say, a data scientist, for example, or someone who's just more skilled in Python, and you've gone and done some proof of concept, for example, or some sort of uh, app locally that you then want to share with your coworkers. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that and uh, note that I'm going to be doing this with Streamlit, but um, uh, of course this is roughly applicable to any sort of Python uh, data app. So whether you're using Gradio or Plotly Dash or even like a, a Flask app. Uh, so again, I'm using Streamlit because that's the most uh, sort of like common and easiest to get set up, but this is, uh, this is more generally applicable. Um, one more quick note here, uh, it's that I'm going to be showing you how to do this with AWS. Um, but before you do anything, um, it's really, really important for you to think about the security um, implications of the data. So uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do this with like basically no security settings. Uh, but of course, if you're deploying an app or a report or anything like that to, uh, to the internet to be accessible from any browser, uh, then you need to make sure you really think about that carefully. So either you need to put your app behind, say, a VPN login, if you have a corporate VPN, um, or you need to have some sort of login, whether it's an email and password or uh, some sort of like SSO login with, say, you know, Google or, or Outlook. Uh, now, of course, uh, you also need to make sure that the data that you're manipulating, if you are manipulating sensitive corporate data, is also properly encrypted uh, at rest and transit and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm not going to touch on any of that in this recording. I'm assuming that if you're doing this, you are thinking about those implications. Uh, but yes, definitely please think about that. Um, in my opinion, it's not thought about enough uh, when folks are deploying these kinds of apps. So I'm going to show you how to do this on AWS using Docker. Uh, and again, we're going to be using a Streamlit app. Um, so roughly speaking, what we're going to do here is what we're going to first uh, just get the app running locally and then uh, build a local Docker image and get that running. And then we're going to spin up the EC2 instance and then push everything that we built locally to, uh, to uh, AWS. So uh, here I have a very simple Streamlit app. So I have a, a, a directory here, Streamlit Docker app. I've just obviously created that anywhere locally. Um, and I just have a very simple uh, single sort of file uh, app here called app.python. And, um, and we'll talk about these other files here in, in a minute. Uh, this is a, again, very simple app. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and run it. Oh, sorry, it opened up in a different window. Let me just bring it back here. Uh, there we go. So uh, this is uh, just showing some fake data and I can you know, select categories and adds it here and so on and so forth. So that's, that's the app. Um, again, the point of this recording uh, isn't to show you how to build a Streamlit app. Uh, plenty of tutorials about that. Uh, it's more about once you have your app, how do you deploy it? So and you can see here it's in, on the local host. Uh, you will also notice that I am keeping uh, my Streamlit app is running on port 8501. That's the default port for Streamlit. So if you do change that for whatever reason, uh, you do want to take note of that uh, because that will um, uh, that will actually matter in some of the configurations that I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Let me kill that. Um, okay, so now let's talk about Docker for a second. Um, you. Uh, if you're on Mac, you wanna make sure you have your Docker desktop app running. Um, uh, and of course, if you're on like Linux, you just wanna make sure you have that running as well, but you basically need it running, so make sure that's that's uh, up and running there and installed. Um, and then let me just go to my notes here, make sure I'm not missing any steps. Um, so you uh, do wanna add a Docker file here to your directory. Uh, this is my Docker file and very simple as you can see here. Uh, perhaps the key points being um, that I'm installing Streamlit and we're exposing a specific port. Um, and then uh, and then we're running Streamlit on that port. So um, I'll share this in my notes, but uh, that's pretty much my entire Docker file. So now from here, let's go ahead and build the image. Uh, let me just write this docker build-t streamlit. 
hello world. So this can be whatever name you want. Uh, it's gonna be the name of your Docker image. And then you're going to need a uh, period here because you do need two parameters. So if we got that right. Okay, uh, this is running. This is actually gonna take a minute. Actually, it's a lot faster. Uh, it's probably already pre-built, okay. So great, so that's built. Um, now let's go ahead and run that and make sure that it's working. So docker run dash p, we're gonna use port 8501, 8501. Uh, and then I call this streamlet hello world. Okay, uh, and then that should work. Okay, so now if, uh, so open it up in a different link. Sorry, let me bring that back. Uh, okay, there we go. So you can see I'm not running Streamlight here um, directly. I'm running the Docker container. And when I go back to localhost 8501, my Streamlight app is showing up. Great, so let me kill that. Great, so now we have our Streamlight app and we have our uh, Docker container locally. The question is how do we sort of like bring that to, uh, to the cloud? So. Again, I'm going to be using AWS. Um, can pretty much do the same in, in any sort of cloud provider. But uh, going to AWS, uh, you will need to either create an account or log into a corporate account if your uh, company already has an AWS account. It will require a credit card, but I will show you how to do this on the free tier uh, to start. So. When you go to, once you've created your account here, go to your dashboard and uh, click this uh, big orange button called launch instance. Now you can call this uh, whatever you, I'm actually gonna call this streamlet app. So you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you can always rename that to later, I believe. Um, now, if you wanna send the free tier, just select Amazon Linux uh, and then I think there are a free, few different free tiers here. I'm just gonna stick with this one, uh, sort of the basic one. Um, and then uh, you're gonna to wanna to stick with x86, I think, uh, to stay on the free tier as well. And then uh, also in the instant type, you wanna stay on T2 micro. There are other options, obviously, but um, those are not free. So if you wanna stay free, you're, you're gonna to wanna to stick with these options. The other thing is you will need a, um, a key pair. So I've already generated one, so I'm not going to regenerate one, but uh, if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and create a key pair. That will give you a PEM file and just hold on to that for a second. So I'm gonna select my key pair. And then uh, in this case, I'm gonna have it create a new security group uh, and I'm a lot SSH traffic from anywhere because I need to transfer files uh, from my local laptop to um, my uh, EC2 instance. Uh, so I need to be able to, uh, I'm just gonna say anywhere, so that'll be easier. And again, sort of like second reminder here, which is uh, really think about sort of your security needs here, um, putting you know your data on, uh, on sort of out there uh, for anyone to access is uh, sort of the best way for someone to test your security. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and launch instance. So take a second, it should be quick. Okay, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into this instance specifically. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, I wanna click on this, okay. So click on the instance and then there should be a button up here called connect, so click that. We wanna basically get to the command line for our instance. Um, just stick with connect using EC2 instance connect. Uh, keep the username as is, unless you want to be specific, in which case you may have to change some of the script that I will provide. Let's give us a second. While it's doing that, let me just glance at my notes here. Okay. So now we're in the command, command line for our uh, for our instance. I need to do a few things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do sudo, um, we need to install, sorry, uh, we need to install Docker. So let me just do that real quick here. Okay, that should be fairly quick.
Okay, there we go. Now uh, we want to, locally I had Docker running here, but obviously we can't do that same thing on um, this uh, remote uh, instance. So I need to start up Docker. So I'm gonna go ahead and sudo, um, uh, what is it, service docker start. Great, okay, so now we have Docker running uh, in the background. Um, and let's go ahead and you'll see here, I am, uh, let me just print a working directory. Uh, I'm in this uh, sort of user directory and I'm going to go ahead and create a new Streamlit app directory and then go to that directory and there we go, okay. So now we have a directory that I'm gonna transfer all my files to, uh, take note of that as well. Um, now let's go back to our local instance. In this local instance, you have your, um, so if you have that PEM file that you created, uh, now go, now's your time to go and grab that and uh, drop it in um, with your Docker file in your stream app um, directory. And uh, I'm not gonna do this because I've already done it, but you are going to want to change the, uh, read access on your, um, on your key. So you want to do this uh, just to make sure this runs properly. And then once you've done that, you're going to, we're going to do the transfer. So let me, I'm just going to go, I have it here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Okay. So effectively what we're doing here is uh, using SCP, we're going to be transferring the pem file, Docker file, and um, or I should, sorry, I should say uh, we're going to be transferring the Docker file and the uh, app to uh, our EC2 user at this IP address into this directory. So this is where directory name matters that you've you've created. If you just used Streamlit app, then just keep this directory. Uh, but you do want to change the IP address here. So I just copy and paste it out from another from some prep work I was doing. So your IP address is down here. Use the public one. Copy and paste that. Okay, uh, great. Now you should be getting uh, this prompt here. So um, you have to type in yes. So go ahead and do that. Okay, great. Now it should be transferred. So let's come back here and let's take a look. And there we go. We have my Docker file and the stream app. So uh, now, I could try to run the stream app directly from here and kind of keep this open, but that's not really the point of uh, deploying this remotely. Uh, you want to be able to kind of shut this down and still have it run. Um, so to do that, we're going to rebuild the Docker image. So uh, let's go back to, let's do sudo docker build t, um, and then, uh, was it streamlit? What did I call that? Streamlit hello world, I think. So I'll just stick with that. And then again, keep that period there. Okay, so that finished building. Um, now let's go ahead and um, uh, let's go ahead and run the uh, container. So sudo docker uh, run slash dash d dash p and then we're going to bind port 80 to um, the stream of port 8501 uh, and then i called this hello world uh, so let's go ahead and there we go okay so theoretically now if i go here and do uh, this we would expect it to run but it's actually not going to run uh, and that is because um, we have not opened up access on our security group. So if you go back to your instance here and hit security, um, then you're going to see a security group assigned to, um, uh, to this instance. So go ahead and click on that. And uh, sorry, security group ID. Okay. So once you're looking at this, uh, you're going to want to change the inbound rules. So again, I'm going to give this like the loosest possible uh, rules. So I'm going to spin this all down once I'm done. 
Um, but uh, in your case, you may want to think about um, which IP addresses can access this and so on and so forth. So I'm simply going to say all access basically. Um, and let's go ahead and I need to specify this, I think. So let me go save, save that and then Okay, uh, there we go. So um, I actually uh, just had to do a little bit of troubleshooting uh, and I think it actually just needed a minute to pick up on the security rules there. So I was doing a little bit of troubleshooting, but um, I made the change and I actually didn't change anything to, to Docker instance. Uh, just refresh a minute later and you can see it's working here. So. Now I can log in uh, from anywhere and play with the app. Uh, and there we go. So again, I'm gonna spin all this down now myself on my end, but uh, that's how you uh, can deploy a stream app to um, AWS um, and share it with your colleagues. Hopefully you found this helpful and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments.